things. And we're going to show you some of those examples. And then we're going to actually walk you through how you can build an interactive listening comprehension activity with your students. Okay. So, let me... so our agenda today, again, we're just going to show you some examples of how it's not for pre presentations. You're going to create an interactive slide. And then we're going to share some templates that I've gathered and shared on Wakelet that have, uh, you know, they span the spectrum of how you can use the templates. And there are um, just so many awesome ways that you can use Google Slides. So just so you know, if you see me looking over this way, it's because that's where you all are, my second monitor. And this well, is where my presentation is. So if you see me looking off to here, it's not because I'm ignoring you. <laughs> So one of the first things in the last session we were in, uh, actually, let, actually, I think when we kicked off, someone asked when we went on our, our um, when we first shut down. So when we first shut down, which was March 13th, like many of you, we, Sandra and I, actually, a few days prior, we kind of had a clue that it was coming. We're like, this is happening. This is happening. School districts across the country were shutting down. So Sandra and I kicked into action and we created a digital learning notebook. So each tab in the notebook, and this is linked, by the way, in the presentation, you'll have access to it, it has different, um, the tools, we're a Google district, so we use Google Meet, not Zoom, and we has all the tips and training that for all the Google tools, but we are also a Newzella district and a Paradeck district. So each one of these tabs just led our teachers to uh, different videos we created, different guides we had created so that they would have everything sort of in one place for them to access easily. And um, we actually put this out on Twitter and it sort of went around the world. And there were actually some uh, Twitter uh, teachers um, who wanted our templates so they could modify it and, and translate it into their languages across the seas. So it is just, and what you can see is it's very different than a Google presentation in that it is in portrait view as opposed to landscape. And we're gonna show you how you can change the size of your Google slides to be portrait instead of landscape. So it's a great way. So the, a notebook, and we've actually had teachers who take this template and created a notebooks for their own class when they're teaching, you know, whatever subject area they're teaching. So just one way it can be used. Sandra and I also, since we've been digital coaches uh, for the past four or five years, we put out a weekly news blast. And it has links and videos and uh, you know just resources for our teachers. It goes out weekly. And uh, from what we've heard, most of them seem to love it and they wait for it on Monday morning. It just drops in their email box. And what's great, since it's in slides, you can slide from one to the other. So if you missed something in a previous week, it's still there. So you can go back to some previous resources. And then we, uh, we hooked our department, needed to start putting out a department newsletter. So this one, kind of off the screen a little so we could show it to you a little more, is again in the portrait view. So again, great way to use for a newsletter. And what's great, since if those of you who are familiar at all with Google Slides, is that you can embed video, you can embed links, and it's all just right there for people. And if you post it to people in this sense for newsletter, in preview mode, then it just opens automatically for them as if it's, in, if it's being presented to them. So they don't have access to edit it. Okay. We also created what's called our help decks. So each help deck, each one of these links to a video, another slide that has a video we've created for each of the Google tools and Pear Deck um, so that we can you know, just have all of those in one place. Now, while we have a very active YouTube channel and playlists, we found that if we just sent people the Google Slides, it was a lot easier for them to just navigate through what they needed rather than to go through each of their, um, each of their particular skill set that they wanted. So they didn't have to go through the whole playlist. They'd be like, oh, I need to know how to change my fonts. They could just click on that video the video is embedded in Google Slides, they're not over on YouTube, having to deal with ads and all that. So we just found this was a better way for people to get to our help videos a lot faster. Okay. And someone asked in the chat if you can embed your videos, oh, so I'm just answering that. Just know that um, there is a limit as to how many times they can be viewed from your drive. 
I'm not sure, sure of the exact number, but it you can put you can create a YouTube channel and do them listed, um, have them be unlisted so that you can still post them on a Google slide deck. We also started creating some interactive list lessons. When we first started with distance learning, you know, a lot of teachers were like, I have these worksheets. How do I get worksheets to my students? How, how do we get them? And the thing is, is that, you know, Sandra and I as digital coaches, we wanted everybody to create and, you know, make all new things, but we totally understood that teachers needed that comfort level because the whole idea of teaching virtually was a foreign concept to all of us. So we show them how you could take a screenshot of your PDF and then just make this. So this outside part here is the, um, is the side of your Google slide that's the gray. You can actually put things in there that are movable. So these can be moved over. They can be dragged into different spots. So it's a sort of a drag and drop over here as well. So it just makes it a lot easier for teachers to, you know, have that comfort level with their worksheets that they were using. And then you can put instructions on the sides for your students, okay? And again, this is linked in the, um, in the presentation as well. So you have access to that. Then we got into teachers like, well, I've got that, but now I wanna do something different. So this is similar to the previous lesson. Again, context clues, okay? And here, we just took text on a Google slide and made it interactive for our students. So we did interactive, um, the ability to highlight because the highlight tool is a tool that you can use in, in Google Slides. You also could ask students to use their circle tool in Google Slides to circle things. So just sort of adding a little bit more interactivity to it for our students. So this is just a different lesson but just looks a little different. And again, just added a pop of color for everyone so that, you know, kind of makes it a little bit more engaging for students, okay? So you can see here's, a, here's an example of what I wanted students to do. And then here, use the highlight tool to highlight the antonym. So in this particular, we're talking about the different types of context clues. So antonym context clues. So in this case, we wanted students to highlight the antonym of the underlying word, and then to fill in the yellow boxes with it's the opposite of which word they found and what it means. So again, just making it a little more interactive for students. Okay. And then this is an interactive lesson on the California Gold Rush. Um, I spent a lot of time in elementary school before I left the classroom, particularly teaching fourth grade. So what this interactive lesson, I'm gonna show you how to build this shortly, is there's a video for students to watch and then just some facts that I want them to fill in. So all of these are text boxes and, and tables, but students can just interact with it. They can do this asynchronously, post it to Google Classroom, and you're good to go. You'll give every student a copy. So you will actually have access to this, which if you want to, you can use it. You make a copy for yourself, or you can just use it as a template and then just add your own videos. So. Let's show you how you can do this, okay? So over on Google Slides, I just have your basic Google Slide, and I don't want this text, text boxes here. So the easiest way to remove text boxes is just to click, click on it and press the delete key on your keyboard, okay? So just getting rid of those. So now I have a blank canvas, but I want my canvas to be a little bit bigger. So if you go back here, you can see this is a little larger I know they can't tell it that much, but trust me, it is. And you come over here and you can resize. So this is where you can resize to be landscape, portrait, a square. So if you were doing an activity, say of a, of a and you wanted to have students create Instagram posts, because again, why not meet students with what they're familiar with? You can resize this canvas to be any size that you want. So you to do that, you come to file, Scroll down to you find page setup. And the default is always widescreen. If you go to custom, you can create any size document that you want. So if you're creating a flyer, you would make it uh, 11 by eight and a half. And then it's inches. And you can change it to centimeters, points, and pixels, but 
you know, I like inches, it's just easier for me to understand <laughs> and then click apply. And now you can see that that has gone to a portrait, uh, sorry, landscape, a piece of paper. And if you wanted to make that the other way, you would do eight and a half by 11. And then there, now it looks like a piece of paper. So that's the best way to really, you know, and I think that's like a hidden thing in Google Slides. A lot of people don't didn't realize they, uh, they could do it. When I first started using Google Slides, I'm like, oh, this is just like Keynote and PowerPoint. No, nah, man, it is so much more. So I'm gonna make this um, 10 by 12. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. Keep reversing my numbers. My Saturday brain, 12 by 10. So it's just a little bit more, almost of a square, but I get a little bit more room than the regular one. Okay. So now I have my canvas. So the first thing I want to do is insert my video. Okay. So I found a video on YouTube, okay, on the California Gold Rush. I've previewed a lot of them, found one that I want. And I'm just going to click the share button and click copy. Okay. Coming back over to the Google slide, I'm going to insert video. Now, since I grabbed that URL, I click by URL and paste. And there's my video. Okay. So again, let me show you that one more time. I insert video. And since I've already copied the URL, I'm just going to right click and paste. And again, I use my keyboard shortcuts, which obviously you can't see. So <laughs> you can right click and paste. The keyboard shortcut would be Control V or Command V if you're on a Mac, okay? But you can just paste as well. Your video shows, you click select. Now this automatically inserted it there, but you can resize these. I'm just gonna use my mouse. I'm just going to tuck it up into the corner and I want to make it a little larger, just like, as if it was an image, and position it there because that is what I want my students to see the most of. Okay, so then it is in position. Okay. So next thing I need to do is I need to add. So obviously, what you would want to do is watch the video and then jot down some questions for your students that you want them to uh, garner from the uh, from the video. So I've jotted down a few questions. And so one of the first questions I've, I want to ask my students is to list three facts about the gold rush. So I'm going to, you have two ways to add a text box. I can either click insert text box, okay? Or I can use the toolbar and this is the text box toolbar. So you'll notice when you hover over these icons, you will see a pop up. So I'm going to click text box. And then with my mouse, I'm just going to draw the text box because I know I want it here. Okay, and then I can start typing. Now I'm just going to paste the text that I have off to the side so you don't have to watch me type. And the great thing is, again, you can format this however you want. So if you want sort of an old timey font, you can put an old timey font in here, changing your fonts here. I'm just going to go with Acme. I'm going to make it a little larger just by clicking these plus, plus sign next to the font. And again, remember font, you can also click and scroll through and pick a font size as well. I'm so happy they added these incrementals because it just helps me kind of nudge it up to where I want it to be, okay? So that question is ready, okay? But now I need a space for my students to add their response. So did you know that shapes in Google Slides can be text boxes? They can. So we're going to insert a shape. And again, you can go to insert shape and select a shape, or you can use the shape tool here to get the same tools. I like them a little rounded. So I'm just going to select that and I'm going to draw it here. Okay. Now, this is great. It's gray. I know that I want it to be, I like to color coordinate. So I can change the, the color of the shape, I, I can almost say text box, but the shape text box by clicking here and choosing another color. I want this a little bit of a yellowy color because I want it to look old timey like the gold rush, okay? Now, since this is a text, a, a shape, if I double click on it, you can see I now have a cursor. 
and the font is Arial and 14. I can change that so that when my students type, it will have the same whatever font I want it to have. Okay, so I'm just going to make this better and I'm going to make it a little larger. So I am actually going to give my students a prompt here so they know to type here. So I could start with a sentence frame. One fact is, and then students could do that. Or depending on the age of your students, you could just simply write, type your response here so that you're kind of guiding them to where you want them to respond, okay? So that's how you can use a text box, a shape as a text box, which is where your students will type. Now, one of the things you want to, might want to consider doing is if we look back over here, is I've made all the places where students are going to type the same color. So it's that sort of a visual for the students like, okay, and again, when you're presenting this to students, you can say, you know, your responses go here. So you can, you can do that as well, okay? So then that one's all set up. Then the next thing I'm gonna show you is I'm going to show you how to add a table because this one over here, you can see there's just some nice places for students to write information. So I'm going to insert a table. So again, the only place to get a table is under insert table. And I'm just going to do, I have question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. So I know I have three questions and three places to answer. So I'm doing a one by six table. Okay, now it inserts it like this. I can notice how my mouse changes to that double cross. So I can just pick that up and position it where I want it. I can also use from the sides to resize it because I know I'm gonna put another question here. So I'm gonna resize it and drag it down. So now I've got some, a little bit more of a space for my questions, okay? So I'm just going to grab some of my questions I have off to the side that I've already formatted. Again, if the font is too small, highlight it and make the adjustments, okay? And again, you can put in the other, in the of uh, every other, if you wanna type, type here or you want to, I'm gonna put my next question and then my final question. Is, goes here. So I've left a space for all of my students to respond to. So let me, if I want, I can highlight all of this, make it all the same. 14, let's see, I used bitter with the other questions. I'm gonna keep doing that. And I'm just gonna nudge it up a little bit, okay? Now, since I know that I want all my students' responses to be that same color, I'm going to click in the cell where I want students to respond and click the fill color bucket and choose that color. So again, I'm just keeping that continuity for my students. I can remember which one I used and then this one. So that I just have that continuity for my students to know that that's where they're going to respond. And again, I'm just gonna nudge that up a little bit. Now, don't worry, when you click on this, that blue box is not gonna show up for your students. So it's still nice and neat for them to see. And again, you can click on here. You can use your arrows to nudge up as well, your arrow keys. Um, yeah, I, I know that someone said, it, it, someone commented that they've never thought to use a table like that. I like the way it looks. It just makes it neater. And again, I'm just doing a variety of things. You can do all tables if you want, and you can put in multiple tables in the same slide. So if you want a table here, table here, you can do whatever you want. You have that. That's one of the great things about slides is the flexibility of where you, and uh, how you design your slide. Okay, I'm just going to nudge this out a little bit. Nice also about slides. I don't know if you can see that light red line on the right hand side. That's letting you know you've reached the end of where you can go. So it's nice and tucked up against the side. You'll notice this table does have borders on it. If you don't want borders, you can highlight the whole thing. Come up here, there's your border weight. Um, it's, it's probably set at one, but if you go to the color and make it transparent, there'll be no lines. So you can see those lines went away. So now I just have some nice, neat looking text boxes for my students, no borders, just to place them type. And again, 
you can type your response, give a response uh, prompt for your students. I saw someone in the chat said, just put it to question mark. So the, <laughs> that's their signal to students. Just let your students know that if you see a question mark, that's where I want your response. So it is completely up to you how you uh, remind your students where they're going to respond. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add another text box over here just to show you that again. And I'm going to use a shape. And again, you have all kinds of shapes you can use. So if you wanted to do um, a circle and have students put something in the circle, you could have them insert an image. OK, so let's say I wanted to um, put this here. OK, and again, I'm just going to make that the same color. Okay, so I just added a circle. And I'm going to add a text box. Uh, and I can just say insert an image. This is why I was not typing. An image um, of a tool used in the gold rush. Okay, so again, just changing the fonts, try to keep that continuity going. And, and then students could use the insert image and search the web right within the Google slide to insert, let's just say a pickaxe, right? And they could just pick one of those and drop it in. So just another, another way to sort of encourage that, you know, uh, researching tools. Again, the listening comprehension from the video and then responding, okay? Now, if you saw over here, we have this really cool background. You can change the background. I always change it at the end. For me, it's just one like final touch. If you go to background, and now you won't see this toolbar if you're clicked on a shape or a table, okay? So make sure you just click on the gray area and you'll see background, okay? Now you can choose, you can change it to a color. So if you want, you can just maybe make it your own little color, right? And that's fine. But I like to make it a little fancier. So I go to choose image. Now choose image, if you have something you, you can upload, so you can drag a file from your hard drive. You can use the web camera to take a picture. So you want to put your own self on there. If you have photos from in Google Photos, if you have something on your Google Drive, or you can do a Google image search. So in this case, I wanted some parchment paper. You can choose this, they, the hundreds of them come up. I think I'll probably use this one, right? And insert. And so now it's got a little bit more pizzazz, not the same one I used before. But what's nice here is now, if you look at it and go, oh, those colors don't work, you can select these again and click here. Maybe I want them to be a little browner. Yeah. See? And again, this has a border. I can, I can just make that transparent because I don't really want a border on it. Okay. And then I can select this and change the color as well. So you can make those adjustments afterwards or not. It is completely up to you on how um, how your brain functions. I like continuity it is one of the words I used to teach my fourth grade students, but when they were doing presentations and projects, I'm like, you have to have continuity between your font and your colors. Make sure it all looks nice together. Um, I would have colleagues like, why are you spending so much time on that? I'm like, I just think it's important. I can't stand a presentation that has 18 different fonts. <laughs> that was just me. <laughs> okay, so that's how you can create that uh, in Google Slides. Uh, and now you would just give this to your students. If you're using Google Classroom, give every student a copy. So when this opens, it would just have the name, the, their name in front of it. They just have the one slide they can interact with and they submit it in Google Classroom. If you're grading in Google Classroom, you know you can just slide through each one and see their responses and give it their grades. So it's really just a great way to make something interactive. And the great part about this is now that it's done, all I have to do is maybe come in and change the background and change the video and my questions. It's formatted. All I gotta do is just redo the text. I would just come, remember in slides, just do file, make a copy, and make a copy of the whole thing. And then you can just tweak it how you need to. So it's already all set up for you, okay? And yes, 
Michelle color picker extension, which I, is one of my favorites up here, allows me to choose my different colors. Okay, so if I want things to match, you can do that. I, you know, there's a hundreds of different extensions out there. Now I'm stuck in that, okay? Great. Kathleen, can you show how to insert instructions on the sides? Sure, if you want instructions for your students, just add a text box. So when you click the text box tool, or again, insert text box, okay? Once you have that tool selected, just draw a text box. And you can write a message here. Students, please, please watch the video. I should probably make that a larger font first so I can see it. And that's, and if you want, you can format this so it stands out to your students by using the fill color. You really want that to stand out? Something like that, boom, there's that message. No, your slide can be any side. It, your slide can be any size to insert instructions. And again, use something that'll stand out because when students open this, they'll open it exactly as you see it. When, it, when they open it from Google Classroom or however you deliver it to them, they will see this this way. This also works. I saw someone had asked about um, this. If you have things over here, these are all movable. So if you want, um, let's say you wanted to put a few images here of, um, let's say I want to do an image of, let's say I put that gold rush pick, okay? Let's say I just put this over here. Okay, your images can stay out here as well and you can have students drag and drop. I've seen teachers do ones and some of the templates we'll look at are, have like um, math manipulatives off, off to the side, coins so that students can drag the amount of coins, uh, unifix cubes. I've seen teachers do all kinds of things where they put all the tools over here and then they can just drag them. Okay, so once the students open this and they see this, they're like, okay, where should I put this tool? I'm gonna put this tool right here. and just goes right on top. So it's a really a great way to create some interactive activities for your students uh, to use, okay? Great questions. And yes, there's so much more space for your students to, to, work, to work with, okay? Great questions, okay. All right, let me go. Oh, that is not where I wanted to be. So in the presentation, by the way, there is a video of all that I just showed you. So you'll learn how to do it. You can, if you're like, oh, what did she do? She went so fast because it was just a 40 minute session. Ah, this video, which is in the presentation, will show you how to do that, okay? And if I could get my slide to go on to the next one. Uh, I had this all set up to be all fancy. All, this, this goes through all of the steps as well. Okay, so templates, okay. Templates are set up many different ways across the internet, okay. Some people might have it as a template and you just would click use template and it creates it on your drive. Some people may give it to you and you get to see the whole thing and you will see view only, just go to file, make a copy. And then when you see this make a copy button, some of it, someone may send it to you with it already set up to make a copy, just click make a copy. So there are many different ways you might see templates, but this is the, these are the three most common ways you're going to see uh, when people send them to you, okay? And here, and I will drop that in the chat as well, is some curated, Google Slides templates from Wakelet. If you are not using Wakelet, uh, I wish someone was doing a presentation on Wakelet because it is some awesome stuff, check it out. But let me just go ahead and open that up for you. Okay, and then I'll share it in the chat as well. So there are many, many oh, that didn't look well, many different things. So these Google, these items that are labeled under Google Drive are actually from Sandra and I's Google Drive, and we've just shared it. These are things we found online, things we've created, and they are just there for you to kind of um, use. 
And then if you scroll on through, Slides Mania is one of our favorite websites. They have, uh, she's, she's actually not a teacher, but she creates so many things for teachers. Let me grab the link for this so you guys can have this right quick. Um, not only does she have cool, um, you know, just fun templates, you know, more, you know, like, like the template um, for just regular presentations. She also has these weekly planners. She has um, different types of templates. If you go to education, you'll see this choice boards, which are really awesome, manipulatives. So she's just got some awesome things. Um, she also has a, a whole section made by other teachers that have submitted to her um, so that you can uh, find. Um, I, I have not found that I can search on um, Slides Mania. But you can um, go by color. That's like an ad popping up in the middle of pens. And you can browse by color. So if you were looking for Mardi Gras, you might want to try to find something that's sort of got, you know, a Mardi Gras color. I'm not really sure which color, maybe rainbow. Um, but you know what? She's great. You could probably ask her if she would add a slide, a, a search fe feature, and that she would probably get you into that. So there's some uh, links to Slides Mania. And then, this one here is actually from Ditch That Textbook, but they're from Slides Mania. So um, this would also be a great resource. And then there's some other collections. So um, including the template that we use for our digital notebook template that I started the presentation with, this is what we found and we tweaked it to meet our needs, okay? So again, my, my wakelet is not the be all end all. You can certainly Google um, Google slides templates, and you can even be specific for primary grade, for math, for you know whatever you, you wanted to um, to utilize. So we're going to give you some time to explore some of the templates, and then come back to the chat uh, and kind of share what you saw and how you think you might use this. Uh, I did see someone say they want to use it Monday, um, but how they might use it in the next coming week. So let me put the timer on and go explore those uh, templates. And yes, yeah, slides go. Love the slides go. This presentation is actually done in slides go. And yes, Canva has some good templates as well. Isn't that there? But I have no music. I thought perhaps you were going to sing for us. <laughs> Still better than that song.
All right. Any questions? Anyone uh, want to drop in the chat or you're actually welcome to kind of pop open your mic. I have no problem with that. If you want to kind of tell us, um, you know, what you saw, what you think, think you might be able to use. I will I'm get a few questions in the chat about Wakelet. Wakelet is, um, is a tool to curate all your content. Um, it is pretty awesome. Um, you know, I have, you could have multiple, what they call uh, wakes, I don't even know what they call them, collections. And you can add as many resources as you want to each collection. So I have one for Google Slides. Um, we're, uh, we're working on a presentation for our staff on Google Drawings. So I have a Google Drawings templates one as well. So it is just a great place to collect a lot of resources to share. There are teachers who build entire lesson plans in, um, in, in Wakelet. I wouldn't say it's like Google Drive uh, because a lot of these linked back to our Google Drive. Uh, it, it is a way to use it similar to Google Drive in that you're kind of organizing your templates, you know, like this is just a way that I was able to organize on our uh, on it's from a Google Drive folder. I could have just shared the entire Google Drive folder with all of you, but I've just felt it would be a little bit organized because someone would be like, well, where are the primary ones? I want to go right to the primary one. So it's just a little bit different way of a um, of organizing. Oh, I see some people want to use the metaphors and similes set in sorts. Great primary slides. Um, I have a couple of questions. Sure. First, where are the um, sentence sorts that they were talking about? Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so someone who mentioned the metaphor simile uh, Roz, where did you find the uh, simile metaphor and simile sentence sort? Okay, hi. <laughs> I found it in, uh, let's see, um, the <laughs> Google, let's see, I have to go back. We have Google. To can you drop a link? Uh, yeah. the, the ELA um, uh, one. This, this one, the ELA slides templates? Yes, yeah, that one. There you go. I can go there if we want, let's see. We've gathered so many things. Oh, there you go, interactive metaphors, similes and metaphors. Yeah. Yeah, just make a copy and, and go for it. Just enjoy it, you know, uh, and if you did, if you did, if you did use some with your, something with your students, you know, and you're on Twitter, give us a shout out and let us know how you used it because, um, we, you know, we, we, we more than willing to share what's out there because we, we love sharing, you know, teachers love to share. Um, have, well, this teacher does. <laughs> I have two other quick questions. Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. They're, kind of, they're related. On your picture on slide nine, where it shows the California gold rush and you have the two black bars above it. That's what I was doing in my five minutes. I went and was changing one of my slides for 
that I have ready for Monday. And I was trying to embed the video like you have there and it gives the two black lines. Is that always the way it is with the two black lines? Yeah, that, second... that comes from, um, from YouTube. Now, yep. my second question is, I tried it and it did not have the ads. It, like normally when I pull it up on YouTube, it has ads and I don't want that. But when I did, it didn't have the ads. Is that always the way it is? It should be when you embed in your slides, it should not have the, the ads. Sweet. Thank you. That's why we encourage this because we don't want the ads. We don't want I the ads. I can't tell you how many times I keep going to video.link and I have to go and right. link. Thank you. I like this better. You're welcome. And what I love about this is that you can, you know, put your questions right there with your students and you know, work on the, you know, the, the listening comprehension because we all know that is something our students need to work on. <laughs> Indeed. And then they can push pause and it just stops the video Correct. right where it is. It doesn't go back. Okay, thanks. Correct. You're welcome. What else? Um, great. Math manipulatives. Great. Uh, you have a question, Kimiata. Okay, so I see, I was trying to play around in the, I guess, Wakelet, the pocket chart template. Is Do we have access to copy that to use that or no? You should. Wait, which way did you find it in? Primary? Uh, primary, yes. Yeah. So I went, I opened it, opened the slide. I hit file, but it only gives me an option to download. Well, that's weird. This one here? Uh, let me. Oh, yeah, I, pocket chart template. Yeah, so it didn't let me copy it. Everything was grayed out. Oh, well, Sandra, you're the owner of that one. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know. I just, <laughs> I would love to use that one in a small group. Yeah, it, it's a great one. And again, because you can change the mm -hmm. thing. Let's see. So it I opened it. Me, so it might be just on your end because I was able to make a copy. You were? Yeah. Okay. Mm, all right. Huh. It, 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 um, yeah, that is weird. Maybe I need to close it and come back. I don't know what's happening, but. Uh, Try it again. And if you don't, are you on Twitter? No. Okay. No. Um, you, you, can, you can email us. Oh, okay, thank you. if I can't years. get in, okay. I can yeah, and, and you can email us at digitalcoaches at org, and we'll help try to help you figure it out. Okay. I have two more questions. Sure. <laughs> um, the first one is, I saw somebody way back when ask if they could sign up for your weekly <laughs> newsletter. Things. Is that, yeah, is that, can you get on that list or not? It, it, it's on our website, which, it, okay. which, uh, which Sandra just put in the chat. So it's always posted there, and because it's it, because it's a Google site and it's embedded, uh, you 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 it it just gets updated each week. Perfect. And then my other question is, when you're sharing those slides that you make with the kids, how are you sharing it with them? So they, they are you having them each make a copy and they send it back to you so you see no, their answers? No, I uh, maybe I left that on out of here. Let's see. I might have just missed it. I think I'm not you, sure. You can use Google. Yeah, we use Google Classroom. Here, I don't. So when you assign to Google Classroom, you add from your Google Drive. You just yeah, need a copy for each. Use that right now. We can. We're using um, uh, seesaw with our young kids. Okay. So seesaw would be. Sandra, any advice on that? Did I'm not that familiar with seesaw. Does anyone else share with seesaw? Mark, is Mark here? Mark, where are you? Un unmute yourself. He's our seesaw guy at our district. Are you there, Mark? So um, let me give you a, a quick tip. Uh, let me give you a quick tip. This is like a bonus thing here. If you're sharing a Google slide with your students and you want to force a copy to get that make a copy one, you see at the top here, it says edit. If you change this to copy, oops, and spell it correctly, and share that link with the word copy at the end. Watch what happens when I do that. It will yep. make, make a copy for every student. Yep, then do you just have to have them all send it back to you? Yeah, you'd have to so have them sub submit it that way. Okay. I know, not fun, but. Oh, thank you, Judy. Judy submitted a help article for Seesaw. Oh, there you go. And someone had to stop the music. Someone did ask about our 
Twitter handle. Oh, there's your slides go. So if you and it's yeah, and I think we are. Um, any other questions? Thank you, guys. You're welcome, and thank you, um, Judy, for dropping in the uh, the uh, seesaw guide there. Um, yes, I you. love that teachers help each other. Yes, awesome. better together, right? Yep. Awesome. Okay. So in the chat, um, I also posted the the schedule again. So if you guys have uh, lost a access to that, go ahead and check out the schedule for the other events that are coming. So again, a round of digital applause for our two presenters today. Thank um, you, Ryan. You guys did amazing. Thank you. Definitely keep track of that contact information. So there's about two minutes left. The next session will start at... 11.40, uh, yeah, in about 12 minutes. <laughs>